What is the weirdest role as a DM you've actually had to do for your players? Let us know in the comments below. Having the druid roll to determine whether or not it was possible to corner the Barovian tropical fruit market and become successful mango farmers, uh, despite the inclement climate and the fact that the only mango they had was rotten down to the seed. They succeeded. This was actually my own role. In our campaign, Talos had been murdered. My paladin of Talos had killed one of the arch wizards of the plain and ripped that wizard's heart out. My paladin offered it to Talos, and I had to roll a d100 and get under my paladin's level 13. I rolled an 8. The skin, heart, and soul crackled with lightning and thunder as Talos reformed with two hearts, his own and the one offered. It was a crazy moment, and it still lingers in my mind today. Roll to see if casting Firebolt on your dick to defrost it removes the whole thing. <laughs> whole new meaning to Icy Hot. The rest of the party pointed out that the Firebolt could kill a commoner. So, if it wasn't cast perfectly just for heat, as the PC intended, it would remove the whole thing instead of defrosting it. This was an Icewind Dale campaign, of course it was, and I never wanted it to go that way. The whole situation devolved rather quickly, he rolled rather poorly, which resulted in the party trying to find him the perfect replacement for the rest of the campaign. I genuinely wish I were kidding. Now the roll wasn't crazy, it was simply a fortitude con save against drunkness. But the results of those rolls had serious consequences. One fail made you tipsy, two made you drunk, three made you sloppy, four made you blackout. And five, well, five had you rolling pass-out saves. For some reason, my character kept making the saves. We went to like eight bars, and I was only tipsy by the very end. But our friends, oh, holy shit! They were basically blackout drunk by bar five. I was desperately trying to get them all to go home, or at the very least, get the little innocent cherub ones to leave. Our sweet little cherub friend would just not go back to her dorm magic school setting. I tried to persuade her girlfriend to take her home, but she was also smashed and refused. So I was desperate. I grabbed this guy who had been super into my character and rolled to try and get them to go back together. You know, like couples go back to an empty dorm, wink wink. Rolled a three on persuasion. They rolled insight against me. Long story short though, they misinterpreted my attempt as suggesting a foursome. God damn it. I both hate and adore when our characters go out drinking. The players were fighting a daemon incursion of Demogorgon demons, and the boss was a water demon in the middle of a lake, surrounded by rocks and platforms floating in midair. Demogorgon is the god of change. So the liquid and rocks kept changing every round. It turned from water to cereal, and milk to syrup, and cheese curds! I made the players roll to see if they could see through the maple syrup to fight the underwater demon. Kind of a sticky situation, I'll just see myself out. My players mixed three wild magic potions, a bunch of drugs, and an alchemy pot of wine together. <laughs> The combo had a fun pre-planned if they do this and fail the con save event. But they had to roll con saves for the drugs and wine, and then roll for a custom wild magic side effect. Only one player failed the con save, which resulted in him passing out and talking to the awakened Kuatoa deity, which influenced the development of the new mini god. I had to come up with a chart for one of my players whose character was addicted to what was essentially magical cocaine. He rolled to see how often he would need a bump, and it was every four hours. Oh god. The uh, <clears throat> pixie dust, as we called it, was similar to wild magic, but the effects were trippy and abnormal. For the D100 table I made, 100 was invulnerable to all damage for two minutes. Because why not? We were having fun. They were in battle with an insanely high level demon lord and were doing quite well. Lots of nat 20s and well-executed combo attacks that piggybacked off each other's abilities. 
They got the Demon Lord down to about 20 HP, he had 680 total, and he used his ultimate ability. I always save that for the end, to at least give the party a chance. The drug using druid had reserved his action because he wasn't able to reach the demon and knew the demon would move forward. So when the ability was used, he decided to go for glory and hit a bump of his stuff. He rolled a 100 and the demon rolled near max damage. Now the druid had no idea what was on this random effects table, so he just waited to find out what it actually did. The boss zeroed out every party member except him. With the boss in range, he casually sauntered over and dealt the final blow. Then he looted the boss and talked to his companions as if they were walking around too. After three perception rolls, he realized his party was actually near death and helped them out, but not before keeping the good stuff for himself. In Princes of the Apocalypse, a satyr warlock went into a room full of ogres to distract and seduce them so they would ignore the party's passage through the dungeon. The ogres demanded their guest to drink their uh, tea, which was filth and ogre piss. Ugh. The entire party urged her not to do it. Well, she did it anyway and failed the constitution save, promptly throwing up, which made the ogres cheer. <laughs> I can't even read this one. Stealth fart. A player was angry at a prison guard who had been mean to them. They disguised themselves as a cook and snuck into the kitchen. While other NPCs were making meals, my player found the meals to be delivered to the north wing where the mean guard was and wanted to crop dust the food. I made them roll for stealth to make sure they didn't accidentally push too hard and make a loud fart, alerting the other cooks. Yeah, I have to roll con saves because I don't want to push something out. I have to tell my players during session zero that I like to stay away from topics involving sex and the like. That's fair. A new player asked where the brothel was. Thinking this was appropriate for the setting, I told him he could easily find one, assuming it would be an out of scene type of thing. Oh, but he wanted names, descriptions, and to roll for the encounter. Wink, wink, cough, cough. I have nothing against that sort of thing. But we're five sweaty guys in a basement. This nerd seriously needs girlfriends. Here is a series of roles that fit the bill of being some of the strangest that I've ever had, all within two sessions. The party encountered a group of hill giants they were commissioned to study and kill. The giants were on a beach, feasting on a beached whale. The party likes doing roles for the size of certain body parts whenever they are revealed. You know exactly which body parts I'm referring to. Listeners, the rogue, who rolled a 40 on stealth, nat 20, and pass without trace, decided to look under the giant's loincloths while they slept. The alpha giant got a nat 20 on his roll for a specific body part, and this will come up later. I'm sure it will. Later, they asked the ranger NPC who was with them to shoot a fire arrow at the whale carcass. The whale had been building up gas, so the arrow caused it to explode, and I made it equivalent to a ninth level upcasted fireball. The role was pretty average, but the fact they had asked for that is pretty crazy. The party ran in and attacked, slaughtering the giants and avoiding falling whale bits. Now, what's interesting is that the bard took out his dagger and attacked the alpha. He asked to target a certain comically large body part, and since the battle was basically over, I let him roll for something completely wild. He jumped up and slid down it with his dagger like a pirate sliding down a sail. Later, the party wondered if their favorite NPC, Katya, was dating the aforementioned ranger, Mela. The rogue burned all his uses of the lucky feat, then added a D4 of inspiration to the highest roll, like give D4s of inspiration capped at three. He just barely made it and found out that Katya and Mela are probably in a relationship. Yep, the players rolled a gaydar check. Oh yeah, and there was also the volleyball match on the same beach, where the druid polymorphed into a giant ape and spiked the ball past a rhino he summoned, next to the rogue's goblin friend riding the paladin summoned horse. What? Is this a cocaine field, like, dream? Like, what's going on here? For various reasons, my players were climbing the world tree and came across two dodos on a nest. 
The plot of this place is that every single species lives happily ever after there. Aw. The fighter of my group, basically a barbarian in denial, asked if a dodo could fly. The wizard firmly said, No. Why do you ask? You're not going to- Oh yes I am! He exclaimed, looking straight at me. He wanted to yeet the dodo as hard as he could. He rolled a 17 plus 9 on that athletics check to throw the male dodo like a javelin straight down. Sighing. I described how the fluffy bird screamed and squealed as it was launched towards its doom. After a minute of falling, a little speck of red appeared below. The fighter was later put on trial by the goddess of the hunt, along with the rogue for a similar accident. Wild day. Well deserved. Actually, the last session was tremendous. In the party, we have a skeleton artificer with diarrhea. Wait, that can't be right. A moon druid and a zombie monk? Now, the druid became a horse to get to the location faster, and the others rode on it. The skeleton said, my PC needs to poop. So I said, just take an acrobatic save to see if you can do it without falling or making everything dirty. The monk wanted to help him. And they managed it, fortunately. What'd you, wait, wait, how did Mr. Bones take a fat dookie? Like, what's going on with the spooky dookie? We need to know this stuff. Uno reverse card. My DM had me do a con save for my attempt to inhale a gaseous form Oni. Now here's some context. We were in a cave, and my character was a rune knight fighter in giant form, which we basically played like the Hulk. The Oni attempted to escape using gaseous form and float right past us. I asked if I could inhale him with my giant lungs, and the DM was generous enough to have me roll three con saves to see if I could do it and if it would hurt me. Well, I succeeded, but I was subsequently cursed for doing so. Oh, it was awesome! Not weird, per se, and it wasn't me, but it stuck out to me seeing the prompt. It was an underwater campaign, with one of the players being a prince of Exparis, the city they had to defend. After combating water forces, they sought a land of magma and fire to the south on the surface to help them align the elements. It was called Ember Fable. During the fight with the Fire Lord Rubius, the prince fell. He was a glory paladin, always putting himself in danger for bragging rights, and got himself down for no real good reason. He was two death saves down, no successes, and it was his turn. He asked me, If I roll a natural 20, can I rage? I said, yeah, sure, go for it. With advantage because that's cool as hell. He did so and rolled two natural 20s at once. The table was lit. Everyone was so excited. He rose from death as a barbarian raged and killed the Fire Lord outright in a cosmic wonder of amazing rolls. Never seen anything like it. Might never see it again. Moral of the story, kids. Always let your players do what they want, because sometimes the clock strikes gold. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and of course, if you want to help us keep some dice rolling and the food a flowing make sure to join our membership program. You can get some early access to videos and possibly some outtakes. I do upload them from time to time. That said, we love you all. Please be safe, be happy, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.